admit everybody. Good morning, everyone. Um, if you could to keep our bandwidth down, if you could all turn off your cameras um, and make sure you're muted. That would be great if I could get you all to turn off your cameras. Because uh, we have kind of a sketchy connection this morning. So I want to welcome everyone to our conservation cat chat with the fabulous photographer Tashi Gali from Nepal. And we're going to be sharing uh, some of his beautiful photographs today and talk a little bit about um, how he came to be a photographer and the different things he's done. And um, Laurel, if you could shut your camera off, that would be great, um, please. So we can make sure that we keep a good connection. All righty. We are live on Facebook this morning. We're also doing this as a Zoom. You can watch either way. If you have questions, you can leave them in the chat and we can talk about them at the end. And if everyone has their microphone off and their camera off, I think that's best. Tashi and I are having a little trouble with our connection this morning. But I want to welcome you, Tashi. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I believe it's nighttime there, isn't it? It's midday here in Illinois. And Tashi's in Nepal. Mm -hmm. And what is it, about 10 o'clock at night there? Yeah, 9.45 now. Uh, Dr. Jackson has joined us. Um, Rodney, did you want to say hello? And then while we're sharing the pictures, I'm going to have everyone shut off their camera and their mic. Oh, namaste, Tashi. So nice to see you. Yeah, namaste, Rodnila. Yeah, nice to see you too. And thanks for joining us. And I really look forward to seeing some of your latest incredible images and uh, learn from you how you spot snow leopards so effectively. So looking forward to it, and I'll hand back to Siobhan. All righty. <laughs> we can talk, um, we'll ask uh, Rodney to join us again after we look at the pictures. But again, if I could um, have everyone please make yeah, sure, sure that your microphone is off and make sure that your camera is off. Tashi, I'm sorry, you were saying something? Let's see here. I'm going to be sharing a slideshow. And Tashi, where are you here? That beautiful lake. What lake is that? Uh oh, did we lose Tashi? There you are. What lake are you standing in front of there, Tashi? Oh, you need to unmute your microphone. I can't hear you. Mm -hmm. There we go. What what oh, lake okay. are you standing in front of there? Uh, so this is the lake, uh, Fuxundo Lake from Dolpo region, yeah. That's beautiful. Shea Fuxundo National Park, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And here's one of the things that Tashi does. He uh, sets up trail cameras or camera traps uh, to take photographs of the biodiversity, the wildlife in the mountains. Um, that's not such an easy task, is it, Tashi? You, how do you make sure that that doesn't move or that the weather doesn't affect it? How did, isn't that difficult to do? Yeah, it's just sometimes the weather is very like challenging in the mountain. But this place, we place the camera 
according to the like script uh, same marking places. So this is perfect for snow leopard. Like they go around and mark mark their territory. So we we, we place the camera at this place. Yeah, this is this is from like uh, it's from Manang, like uh, one and a half hour from our village. What elevation is this? Yeah. What's the height there? The elevation above sea level? Can you hear me? I think he locked up. Well, that's not good. <laughs> I don't think we have Tashi. Oh, he said this is Hoksundo Lake from Dolpa, where he is. Um, here he goes. What uh, Rod is back here. Tashi's uh, muted again. I'm not sure. It it seems to mute each time. Yeah, Tashi, can you unmute yourself? There we go. This is um, another photograph of yeah, can you hear me? setting yeah. up the camera. Yeah, now, this is. Go ahead. Yeah, this is above Munang. Like this is at the elevation of 4,600 yeah, 4, meter. So this is the place where we capture snow leopard, uh, like a uh, rock sand scrapping and palace cat, palace cat also uh, like photographing this this camera i mean this area yeah now i'm sure all of you guys are familiar with palaces cats they also um live in this area and but they didn't know it that they were in nepal and i think tashi you said it was 2012 he captured a photograph a camera trap photo of a palaces cat and wasn't sure about the identification. So he posted it on Facebook and all of his associates, um, conservationists immediately identified it as a palace as cat. So uh, Tashi, what was that like to be the first one to find a palace as cat in Nepal? We've lost him. Yeah, well, he'll be back. But he said that he was telling uh, me that. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a. Uh, there he is. There you go. Oh, boy. Too bad. Yeah, we have a, a really sketchy connection this morning, but Tashi was telling me that uh, immediately everyone identified it as a palace's cat. Isn't that gorgeous? But you really have to protect those cameras, don't you, Rodney, from the wind and the snow and ice and... Uh... Yeah. You, you can see Tashi standing on a high ridge line here with the Annapurna range behind him. So this is at about, if I remember correctly, it's about 12,000, 13,000 feet, something like that. Um, and the cats like to walk the high ridge lines and look down. And I think in part of it, because they approach their prey, which is blue sheep, and I'm sure Tassi will show a picture of those from above rather than from the bottom upwards. Um, we still lost Tashi. Yeah, unfortunately, Manang is a remote village um, and they've had a very severe monsoon this year, which has really disrupted uh, communications. And so it keeps going in and out, I guess, is what's happening to us. Oh. It is yeah. also, uh, you know, nighttime in Nepal, and a lot of people are probably personally, you know, talking to friends in the, in the U.S. or wherever. So that also fills the system. Even when it was just Tashi and myself on, uh, we had a really hard time. He couldn't hear me. So hopefully he can get back on with us um, shortly. Uh, I think it was in 2018, Tashi won the Disney Conservation Hero Award. 
for his work in conservation. And then we were gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing there and see if I can get um, in touch with him. Yeah, you try to get in touch with him and I'll show that picture and I'll talk about it a little bit with some background of how we got involved with Tashi. The picture you just showed of the two cats in the snow. I am going oh, there to. There he is. And he's muted again, so it seems to happen automatically. Okay. Tashi, can you unmute yourself? There's Tashi. And Tashi, you were telling me these were from March of 2006? You muted, Tashi. Technology is challenging. Even the big networks like NBC have trouble. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Tashi. Um, we're looking at your photograph from 2006. I... Where was this taken? Yeah, so this is from 2006, like uh, my first uh, live sighting of Snow Lady in Manang. Were you very far away from them at this point? Like uh, in the beginning when I saw them, it's very close, but uh, after uh, like they saw me and they run away. And they cross oh. the river, and so this is from the other side of the river. <laughs> Here they saw you. <laughs> so, yeah. So that time, like, uh, I was doing camera trapping. Uh, the old one, which uh, Rodney sent me the, uh, the trail camera. So, like, uh, I installed place. So every, like, like Sunday, I used to go and see the exposure and batteries. So the same time I saw this, uh, these two leopard in that uh, area. Someone in the, oh, it's Siraj uh, says, it looks like the snow leopards are following you instead of you following them. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder about that. I always call Tashi the, the snow leopard whisperer. Uh, they seem to like to be around you. <laughs> yeah. They feel, they feel very comfortable uh -huh. with you. This is a cool picture. Where were you uh, from this cat? Look at that tail. Yeah. So this, this is also the same time, yeah, from the 2006. And the paw. Oh, my goodness. Look at that paw. Um, can everyone make sure that your uh, cameras are shut off? I think some of you might have your cameras on. Um, we're having trouble with our connection this morning. This one was taken in February 25th of 2008. Just beautiful. Yeah, 2008. So actually, this is uh, the mother. Actually, there were two cubs, but uh, the cubs, they run away very fast. And so this mother, they stay for some time. So I took some pictures of this mother. <laughs> That's neat. So this is, uh, yeah, so this is also almost the same place as the first, first one. Like, yeah, the same, the mother. It's a lot of work doing this, isn't it? The cats are always on the steepest of terrain. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> that's right, Ronnie. They sure <laughs> don't make it easy for them, do they? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you want to talk a little bit about how you approach them, where, where you go, Tashi. Like uh, this, uh, this boat uh, place is like uh, two hours from here, like two hours from Munang, the place called Gunsang. So whenever I saw the snow leopard, like uh, I take hour or two, sometimes 
three to, three to four hours to get close. I give them like uh, more time to like uh, uh, for relax. To yeah, make them like uh, I'm not hurting them. Ah, uh, you, you let them get used to you. Used to me, yeah. yeah. And slowly get closer and closer, yeah. I was asking Tashi earlier how he came to be a photograph uh, photographer, and you said that you had taken an art class. Was that a drawing? Yeah, in the early nineties, I did a uh, uh, painting class in Kathmandu. So after that, uh, I like uh, uh, tried uh, photography with my friend, like going together on a like. Uh, weekend for photography. So like uh, before I used to take only like a landscape, people, mountain. And then after 2004, in 2004, like uh, I did uh, like a nature guide training in Manang. The same year I met uh, Darla. And then we talk about snow leopard. And then she promised me to send uh, camera trap. So the next year, 2005, Rodney sent me the trail camera. And then after, like, I started camera trapping from that trail camera. For Snow Leopard, yeah. Wow. Where was this one? This, this cat looks like it's on the run. Uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, going down, yeah. It's from the from Gunsang, the yeah, same place, the first one, and this one from the same place, Gunsang. It's two hours from, two hours walk from Manang. Okay. Let's see if I can go back. Lisa, could you turn your camera off, please? I, I should just add that the first camera traps that we sent to Tashi were all film. Uh, they would only take something like 36 exposures, which is ah. quite challenging. And obviously Tashi had a, I assume Tashi can tell us, you had to send the film to Kathmandu for processing. And it wasn't until later that we got digital camera traps, maybe, maybe about 2008, if I remember correctly. So you may want to talk a bit about the challenges there and how photography has changed. Yeah, it sure yeah. has come a long way. Yeah, can you tell us about that, Tashi? That's a really good thing to... Yeah, like uh, before, like uh, Rodney sent me the trail camera. That was like a film camera, like film camera. So like uh, we have to identify the place where the snow leopard comes and goes. So I placed the camera. But that time, the technology is not that uh, fast. So, so we have to like uh, finish the all the film. I mean, uh, I have to expose all the film and then bring it down to Kathmandu and then process. Then we, I, I have come to know that, that I snow leopard. We got the same year, we got uh, three individuals in that uh, camera trap, yeah. And uh, I got, uh, now we are using the digital one. This is very fast, like we can, we can like uh, see the image immediately. So you went from film cam film cameras to digital, and digital, so now yeah. you can immediately take it off of the camera, and you can see it right away when you go to the camera. Do you ever have any of these cameras yeah. um, that are hurt or damaged by wildlife or stolen by people? Uh, not damaged by. Uh, like a uh, animal, but uh, three camera were stolen. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, like one one is like a uh, little damaged by the crow. 
they like uh, they try to uh, they use their beak to I don't know like curious or I don't know. <laughs> oh, they peck at it then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now these were taken in 2018. This series, 18, this one appears. Yeah. Uh, Tashi was one of the contributors to the book Searching for the Snow Leopard. And uh, this is one of the photographs that appears the series here. And these were taken in, uh, was it in January of 2018? Looks like. Yeah, so yeah, what yeah. Was, what so is it like? It, it looks very sunny, but what was the temperature when you were doing these photographs? Was it very cold? Actually, it's winter. It's quite cold, but uh, that time uh, it's in the uh, middle of the day, so it's it's very sunny. And for so this is this is also the mother with two calves near the cave. Ah. So how? Yeah, and uh, the same day, like uh, I started from Manang to monitor, like monitor the camera trap up in the mountain. So I was going up and then, so from the trail, I saw some like a vulture, like a, a soaring above sky. So I changed my route from other, di uh, other direction. And then when I got there, there was a kill, like a baby yak was killed by the snow leopard. So uh, the kill was almost finished and uh, I don't see anything, but when I, like I wait for some time and after the mother came out near the, uh, near the kill and then after some time, the two cops were there. <laughs> so yeah, so I spent like around um, three hours watching this mother and two cops. Wow. And this is the middle of the day and they were active during the day. Yeah, yeah. So How the far? first sighting was like 11 or 11.30 a.m. Uh -huh. So till, uh, till yeah, three, I was watching them from wow. the distance. That's a long time to sit there in the cold. <laughs> yeah. Did they, during that time, did they mostly stay in the same area or did they move around a lot, me, making you move a lot? Yeah, they are moving around, yeah. Now, how far are you away from this cat in this photograph? Are you a great distance? Uh, this one is quite great uh, distance, like maybe 150 meter or 200. But I was using like 500 mm lens. Yeah. I love this is another photograph that appears in the book. This is just spectacular. You can really see mm -hmm. everything about this cat, the beautiful long tail, the big paws, um, the big nasal cavity the little tiny ears, the beautiful camouflage. It's amazing, Tashi, isn't it? How they do blend in so well with whatever terrain they're on. Like, look how well it yeah. blends in with the different colored rocks there. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're like, uh, the rose are the same as the stone in the background. <laughs> now, is she, she's aware of you taking her picture? You're, I mean, she's aware that you're there. Yeah, 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 yeah. She seems curious, but not yeah, too she concerned. Aware. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that tail is glorious. It's amazing. That tail is as long as her body. It's just beautiful. Yeah, it's the same, same, same. Yeah, same size. The body and the uh, the tail is the same size, almost the same size. Yeah. Now, this is an one interesting, meter. are you, where are you? Are you on like a ledge or are you on the side of a hill or are you on a rock above her? This is, looks very precarious to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, this is like, uh, I was on the like uh, opposite of the hill. 
like a small gorge and the leopard is on the other side and I'm on the other side, yeah. It's amazing. It seems like that you are very in tune with your surroundings. Like you said, you were going in one direction and then you saw the vulture or the bird circling around what was probably another dead animal. And so you changed direction to go there. When you do this photography, you have to be very aware of what, of everything, don't you? Of all the other wildlife and your surroundings um, so that you can, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like many uh, times happens like uh yeah like uh early, early in the morning i go for one direction and then i see some sign sometime like the pug mark sometime the vulture so i change my direction to the others to to follow how many, the, how many sightings the have you had now sometime uh, uh, live sighting? Yes. How many of you had now? 17. 17. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, everyone, this rock that we're looking at, there are snow leopards there. I don't know if any of you can tell where they are. Um, if you look at the rock <laughs> <laughs> up near the top, over to the left, there's a little alcove like, I don't know if any of you can see, this is one of the photographs also in the book, this series. Um, now, how far are you away from this big rock at this time, Tashi? Uh, this is almost like 200 meter. Actually the same distance, but uh, like uh, I was trying to show you the whole uh, habitat. So this is, I use like a uh, less, less zoom to show all the habitat. Yeah, that looks very deceiving. If, if you, if everyone looks behind, he's pretty far up there. I just, <laughs> that would take my <laughs> breath away just being that high up and all that, but here they are. And I don't know if you can see the overhang, but if you look back at this rock, they're over there in the left-hand side, um, up near the top. Mm -hmm. And there they are. Now they all look like they're looking right at you, even though you're pretty far away. <laughs> I, yeah. I know people have asked me, did he use a drone? And I said, no, no drone. This is all <laughs> manually taken. Uh-huh. How old would you so say this, these cubs were, Tashi? Uh, these are like eight to nine months. Yeah, probably eight, nine months, yeah. About nine months? Look yeah. at that. I see the cubs are moving around quite a bit and mom just kind of yeah. lays there. <laughs> uh -huh. They're curious about you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like the and this, the cows moves 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 around mom mother like <laughs> they're crawling about mother. Yeah. Yeah, mom seems to stay in the same place, and the cubs are in a different place each time. That this yeah. one is so cute with its paw out in front of it. Yeah. Now, snow leopard <laughs> cubs, they stay with their, their mother is close to two years. She's got a yeah, lot. 18 to from, yeah, from 18 months to two years. Yeah, they stay with the, uh, the mother, yeah. Yeah, this, uh, this photograph is uh, in our book. I know we've got some, um, there's someone that would like to, uh, we'll talk about it later, use this photo, I think, for a sign. Do Let's see. This is an interesting photo. When I first saw this one, Tashi, I only saw one snow leopard. Can everyone see uh -huh. how many snow leopards there are in this photograph? And what's very strange 
is I only thought there were two after a while. And now today, for the first time, even though I've seen this photo hundreds of times and it's in our book, I noticed that there are three snow leopards in this photograph, the two cubs and mom. And I have to admit that today is the first time I saw the third one. So these are very... <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, it's, I, it's crazy one of the photographs from one of our other contributors um oriel alamani from spain uh i thought there was only one snow leopard in the photo and after the book was published one day i was looking at it and i'm like oh there's another snow leopard there it was another mother and two <laughs> cubs so um i just now today see the snow leopard the cub over to the left next to the um, overhang of that rock. That's amazing. Yeah. This would be a yeah, geologist's um, perfect photo. Yeah, they are so elus that. elusive. Yeah, they are like, uh, so like uh, the camera flows, like they blend into the nature. It's very, <laughs> yeah. And they're watching you. Yeah. This one I thought was neat. It's kind of cocked its head and, and uh, it's amazing how sure-footed they are now. But then of course, so are the sheep. The blue sheep um, are very sure-footed. Mm -hmm. And this photograph, it's mom and the two babies. This one, I don't know how they're negotiating this at all. I, this just, every time I see this, it, it scares me because I think they're gonna fall. <laughs> <laughs> Now, are they going up, Tashi, in this photo, or are they just moving yeah. laterally? Yeah, yeah, they, they are going up, yeah, actually. Yeah. And now we move to a different time. These were taken, uh, were these like in, what time of year were these, Tashi? These are summertime? Uh, this is, uh, uh, September, September 2019. Yeah. September of 2019. So, Can you tell us about yeah. what you got, what you were doing that day? Uh, that day, like, uh, I was, uh, counting blue sheep with, uh, with, with one of the PhD scholar from Germany. So we were, we were counting like a uh, double observation me and the scholar. So like uh, we were like uh, doing like three or uh, three periods, like uh, in each period we have 15 minutes. So on the third uh, uh, period, like uh, I saw some movement on the distance. So this one is like uh, say around like 635 meter away from uh, like our our spot. So we saw this snow leopard and we took some, some pictures and we waited for like half an hour to get closer. After 30 minutes, we get we went uh, closer and took some other pictures also. Like, yeah, this one, yeah. So this is closer after like 35 minutes. Not 35 minutes, like uh, we waited for 35 minutes and then we went closer and then this is around like 150 meters maybe around yeah i remember for the book that you had said that you didn't see it for a while and you thought it had gone and then you got really close and it was still there <laughs> yeah yeah now is, could you tell is this a male or a female uh, this one must be female, yeah. She's very beautiful. People are always surprised yeah. to see this photo because they're like, but there's no snow. And I said, well, there is summertime there. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last recent picture also, like people saying like, it's very different from the others, like uh, lots of green around. <laughs> but now it's summer, so... That Dr. Jackson always tells us that they don't really like to walk on the snow and the ice because 
the ice crystals form on the on the pads of their feet and they cut their feet. Do you ever see yeah. like blood or in the snow from from them walking on it in the winter time and have cut their feet? Yeah. Like when they walk in the snow, like when they see stone, like they immediately jump into the snow. Uh, I mean, jump onto the stone to escape the snow. Oh, they'll jump onto <laughs> the stone. Yeah. To avoid the yeah. snow. Yeah. And this marvelous photo, this was um, a little bit later. Was this the one from New Year's, December 31st? Yeah, December 31st, 2019, yeah. This is magnificent. Now, were you close to this cat? He looks like he sees you or she. Yeah, this one also must be female, female, yeah. So like this is like near Tengi, like a uh, Tengi village. Like I was on a like, hike, of course, no leopard. So I saw some vulture like uh, sitting, like sitting on a cliff. So I went nearby and then the snow leopard killed a blue sheep, but the kill was almost finished. So the snow leopard went up and like uh, I, like I was watching around six hours with this uh, snow leopard, yeah. Wow, going six around, hours, wow. Yeah, going, resting, like going around and uh, like sitting, resting, <laughs> yeah. And sleeping. So, <laughs> yeah, sleeping, <laughs> This yeah. one, I love this one because it has its eyes closed. I don't know if everyone can see that, but it's it has its eyes closed, it's napping. <laughs> Yeah, so this is from the uh, 22nd February uh, 2020. So this one is like uh, I was going on a hike. And uh, so I was on the way to Kangsa. But before Kangsa, there's a, uh, one suspension bridge. So I saw some like bug mark. So I was following the bug mark, and then later I saw this snow leopard, yeah. So this is also near Gunsang. Beautiful. So this is the one like I saw, like at the one of the nearest sighting here. Maybe around uh, 25 meter. Oh, wow. Oh boy. <laughs> wow so that time like I was like I spent not much but uh, around 25 to 30 minutes like seeing, seeing each other yeah. did they just sit and look at you as you're looking at them I mean do they do they come close to you? Do they start, you had said something about sometimes they do start to walk towards you? Uh, yeah, sometime, but that time was like going a little further and climbing on a ridge and then watching me and staying for like a while and then again go further, yeah. So they're studying you and you're studying them. <laughs> Yeah, have you yeah. learned <laughs> since you've spent so much time with them? Have you learned a lot about their behavior, um, what they're like? I mean, what they, what they're doing all day? I mean, you've spent hours and hours with them. Are there things that you've learned about them that you didn't realize? Yeah, like uh, I've learned a lot. Like uh, to get closer, I I have to I have to spend uh, more time to make them like easy, like uh, make them calm. So like most of the time I, s I don't uh, stand like sitting on a, on a ground and take some pictures and then slowly, slowly get closer to make them like familiar with me. 
Yeah. And because you're you're also a predator, your eyes face forward. So I suppose if you yeah. stay low, then you're less threatening. So yeah, they yeah. accept you. Now, someone asked in the chat, they asked, does your camera make any sound? When you take a photograph, does it click or make any sound at all? Or is it silent? Yeah, make some yeah click yeah small sound yeah. Did that does it's that depend startle like, them or or do they just get used to that? Uh, they get uh, used to that because it's twenty five meter thirty meter is quite distance for like that is small sound. I think yeah. Because it's very quiet there, isn't it? Very quiet in the mountains there. That's but, what a lot of the photographers say, how quiet it is. But the wind is very windy. The, the sound of the wind is very loud. Oh, uh, loud in the mountain. Yeah. This is an interesting photograph. I wonder where this fellow was going. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, this is from the 31st December. 2019, yeah. And then there's this gorgeous photo. Yeah. It looks yeah, like this you, is the pose, same. you pose this one. I mean, this is with the little pinkish flower over to the right, and it looks like a pose photograph for a magazine. This is spectacular. <laughs> Very good. Congratulations. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. I love the way that you the way you did your setting that the background is blurred and that um, it's it's like it's cloth. It's, it's just, it's very soft. And then you have that hard rock foreground. Very, very beautiful, Tashi. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah. It's like a painting, it's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now you've lived in this area your whole life then. So you don't have any problems with the altitude, I imagine. Yeah, we don't have that problem <laughs> because uh, the Manang itself is 3,500 meter. So the snow leopard is around, <laughs> not that far. Mostly like I saw the snow leopard at 3,900, 4,000. Yeah, most of the time, yeah. But you live at that, uh elevation so you don't have to get used to the the lower oxygen yeah this is an interesting photo now with covid with the pandemic have you still been able to get out or did you have any restrictions that kept you from going out in the field uh to do studies and to take pictures and no not not that prob big problem for us like yeah like going out from the village to the next, I mean, in the cities or different district is strict, but in the village itself is not that uh, problem because right. it's a small village going out in the field is alone, not uh, interact with other people. So not that uh, big problem. Yeah. This is a very interesting shot. Are you yeah. high up on a rock like the cat is? <laughs> um, this is again the other side of the valley, uh, the ridge. I mean, the trail. I was on the trail, trekking trail. I was, for these pictures, actually, I was uh, returning from Yakarta to Munang, like in the evening, late evening. So, I saw uh, some movement on the other side of the ridge. So this is like 20, 30, 20 minutes later when I saw the beginning in the different uh, ridge. We slowly, the snow leopard uh, went to the other, uh, other ridge. So this is the one I got. Night, uh, nice, nice pictures. <laughs> This is interesting because you can see the tree line. Um, 
So how far are you from the trees? Is that pretty far away? It's deceiving. Uh, the, uh, yeah, trees uh, uh, is far away from, uh, from that uh, place, yeah. Someone asked in the chat. And, I'm sorry, go ahead, Tashi. So uh, this ridge and the tree, they are like a big distance. Like, I mean, there's a big river, two big rivers in that uh, gorge. Oh, there's a gorge there with the rivers. Yeah. Someone asked, have you ever fallen, Tashi, or come close to falling when you were out? Because I know you go out quite a bit alone hiking or you go out uh, biking. Um, have you ever had a close call or they were wondering? Uh, yeah, sometime, yeah. <laughs> Not big uh -oh. fall, but small. <laughs> uh oh. Not walking, but cycling sometime, yeah. When we cycle down. <laughs> uh oh, uh, you're laughing. <laughs> Did you get hurt? <laughs> uh, small heat. <laughs> Uh oh, uh, Tashi has created uh, some cycling uh, videos that you guys have to see. I aren't they? Are they up on your Facebook page, Tashi? The the video of you cycling? Uh, not on Facebook, but YouTube. YouTube on my YouTube. YouTube. They're fantastic. Yeah. Uh, he takes a bicycle where I would be afraid to walk. It's amazing, and you go so fast, and it's just I love. I love it. I watch it over and over again on these little tiny foot pads. Um, there he goes with his bike. It's just, and you just sail along, but so you've crashed on your bike before. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not good, Daddy. <laughs> uh, now this is a recent photo um, that we just got from Tashi. When, can you tell us about this one? So this picture I took on uh, 21st June, 2021. Like uh, me and Rinjin, we spent two months in uh, Mustang, like surveying like a snow leopard and snow leopard spray, but we didn't see any, any snow leopard. We saw only the pug mark scrap, but after returning from Mustang, like I was, uh, I returned from Lomandang to Manang, I made it in one day. So, like, uh, I took a mountain bike from uh, Leather to Manang. And uh, after two weeks, I was returning Leather to return the bike to the owner. So, after re return my uh, uh, mountain bike, I, then uh, in the evening, uh, Afternoon, I was returning from leather and uh, uh, like later, and uh, I took some uh, like off the trail. So I saw this snow leopard, which is like uh, it's very near, like uh, maybe like 30 to 40 meters from. Wow. Yeah, from the side. Yeah. <laughs> this one doesn't look very, this one looks young, it looks smaller. Is it, do you think it's a uh, young? Not young, it's actually it's adult. But it? uh, when they see it, this is smaller, yeah. But um, the other pictures, they are very big, looks big mm -hmm. when they stand out, when they walk. I suppose it's trying to look small. It doesn't want you yeah, to yeah. notice it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those eyes are really looking right at us. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> What's that like, Tashi, to have a snow leopard being 25, 30 meters away from you, looking right into your eyes? Do you ever just sit there and not take pictures and just look at each other? <laughs> <laughs> like uh, when I saw, so when I saw, I saw, I took some pictures and then staring for some time like waiting for to do something <laughs> and then slowly i go a little closer and then again sit for some time like give time for them to like 
uh, to be normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this isn't like going on a photo safari in Africa where you can, the cheetahs and the lions walk right up to the jeeves. This is something different. These animals don't, mm -hmm. I suppose they do see us, they do see people, but they don't get up close and personal. So it's a new experience for them too. Yeah. Amazing. This is one of my favorite photographs you've ever taken. Can everyone see the snow uh -huh. leopard? If you can't, let me know. <laughs> this <laughs> one is magnificent. I, I told Tashi this needs to be on the cover of National Geographic. This is spectacular. This one makes goosebumps. I, I, just, <laughs> I just love this. How did you happen on this cat? Did you even know it was there? I mean, just did you turn around and it was just there or what? How did this happen, Tashi? This one, like, uh, like actually I was in the Manang, like doing some like photo edit on my laptop. And then suddenly like one of the villagers from next village, he called me that uh, the snow leopard is there uh, resting on a cliff. So immediately like I pack up my bag and went up and then he's trying to sh show me the snow leopard, but I can't. It took like 10 to 15 minutes to see this snow leopard. Like we went closer, still we can't see the snow leopard because because of the like uh, because of the bush. And uh, still, like my friend, they can't see the snow leopard because they saw going like they says, like they went, the snow leopard went inside that bush, but it's it's uh, very hard to see. And later, like uh, after the 10, 15 minutes, I saw this, this uh, site, yeah. It, it took me like, like 10 to 15 minutes to see this, uh, this site, yeah. This is just amazing. And Tashi does more though than just the photography. You do so much with conservation. Um, Tashi has worked with the Snow Leopard Scouts in Nepal uh, program for youth. You worked with them um, in herders, teaching them how to use camera traps, didn't you? Yeah, like uh, uh, before, like before, uh... Before the pandemic, we do a school program like grade uh, eight and nine. We take them to the field. They, like we teach them the sign survey, uh, camera trapping. We do like a painting competition, poem competition. Yeah. And uh, for others, like uh, we uh, teach them to like, uh, the fox light to install fox light for their like uh, uh, livestock. Yeah. Yeah. Tash, you're talking about fox lights, predator deterrence. They're a, a flashing light uh, that's solar powered, battery operated, and they have a light sensor and they come on after dark and they flash on and off, uh, resembling a flashlight, and it scares wolves and snow leopards, predators away from livestock. Um, you put your animals in a predator-proof pen with a roof on it and then put these fox lights around it or just a regular corral. And, and then it's, it, it's so that the people don't have to stay with their flocks all night long. These uh, fox lights go on and off. And, and you've done work with a lot of the local herders with the fox lights then, Tashi? Yeah, like in Manang, uh, I did with the 23 others, yeah, 23 others around Manang. Yeah, this is a camera trap photo, <laughs> the tail end. Um, one of the questions in the chat was, how do the local people feel about snow leopards? Do they 
uh, respect them? Do they think of them as a nuisance animal? Uh, is it helped? Has conservation helped? You know, work predator proofing the corrals and and doing awareness and education and and stuff. Does that help Tashi, or do they have a negative attitude about the cats? Uh, before, like uh, most of the like livestock uh, owner, they are negative with the snow leopard. But now it's less people, uh, like it's very less people. They are like, uh, like most of the people they like the snow leopard now. Like only some livestock owner, they they don't like the snow leopard because they kill many goat and sheep. Uh huh. But most of the people, like uh, school students, like uh, like tourism entrepreneur, they like they like uh, they are positive with the snow leopard. So the older generation is still doesn't care for them, but the younger generation seems to be more accepting. Then is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but has ecotourism? Uh, when we can have ecotourism, has that helped then at all with attitudes towards the snow leopard to bring a different, more, uh, to bring money into the community through tourists that want to see them? Yeah, it's helping like the tourism. Uh, like uh, two years before we did uh, snow leopard like uh, trekking, but after the COVID the pandemic, now it's like uh, they postponed all the trek. Let's see, like this November, November we have a trek, but uh, not sure because of the pandemic. Yeah. So the pandemic has really affected tourism. That doesn't help. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions in the chat was about climate change. Have you seen, they wanted to know if you see any evidence of climate change. Um, in your area in Nepal? Yeah, in Manang, we see like many things like uh, the rainfall, snowfall is changing, like not in uh, usual time. Like uh, this year, we have a uh, big uh, rainfall, like uh, most of the uh, motorable road are damaged, mm -hmm. uh, like floods and landslides. Even the we have a, like a, one big lake near, near the village. Now there's no lake anymore because of the siltration. It's all uh, like uh, filled with the sand and muds. Oh, yeah. So many changes. This wow. rainfall, like we had very big uh, rainfall this year. And that affects everyone. It affects all the. Yeah people yeah. and all the wildlife. Yeah. Yeah. Like last year, like uh, 19, 2019, we had a, we had a very big uh, snowfall. Like many wildlife uh, were killed by the uh, avalanche. Wow. Yeah. Do you have many earthquakes there? Uh, this year, like we had, uh, we feel twice in, twice in Manang, but in 2015, we had a very big uh, earthquake in Nepal. Caused a lot of damage. Lots of damage, yeah. Wow. Let's see if there's any other questions. Um, uh... Just more questions about the conflict between people and and predators. Um, are there a great deal of livestock killed by snow leopards and wolves in your area, um, or has predator proofing and fox lights have has that brought the number down? Yeah, fox light is. Uh, uh... Because of the fox light, the numbers of uh, conflict with the livestock is going down. But it depends. Like uh, in the early days, we have only snow leopards. 
but now we have uh, wolf and from two three years we have now common leopard now we have a big big issue with the dogs feral dog oh the feral because, dog yeah big problem with the feral dogs these days now they're yeah. a problem because they're a problem to snow leopards. They're a problem to small prey animals. They're a problem to people. Um, do they ever attack people or domestic dogs or sheep? Or they do that too, don't they? No, not with the people. Not only with the livestock. With the livestock. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's competition. People, yeah. That's competition for the wolves and the snow leopards but i've seen photographs with packs of feral dogs cornering snow leopards so attacking the snow leopard that's not good yeah yeah the feral dog issue is starting to be a problem everywhere in that area in china and yeah in india yeah. and nepal that's not good yeah do you have any type of um insurance programs there where if people do lose livestock there's like a community insurance program where they can uh, be reimbursed yeah we have from the conservation on the Puno conservation area they have a small like a insurance program but the compensation is very small now in the early days like 25 30 years before it's good but uh, the price of the livestock is going up, but the insurance is same as uh, oh. 25 years. Oh, so that's it's, not good. Yeah, it's not good, yeah. Like, that sounds like uh, something they compensation have to work out. Raise, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, raise the, the compensation, yeah. There's a question yeah. in the chat. Um, Overall, do you think that the conservation efforts are making a difference then? I know the pandemic has affected that, but they would like to know if you could tell people that don't live there one thing about the big cats, what would that be? So I guess it's a two part question. Do you feel that the conservation efforts are helping? And if you could tell us all one thing about snow leopards, what would that be? Yeah, conservation is helping from other, from many like perspective, like uh, the awareness, like people aware of the snow leopard, not only snow leopard, but the other like wolf, uh, common leopard. The conservation is helping in many ways, yeah. And what's, what's one thing that you've learned about the snow leopards that really stick out in your mind? Something very special about them that that you like or have observed or? Like uh, the snow leopard, they are very elusive. They are... Um, I know that you take a lot of photographs of other species too and, and uh, your bird photographs are just amazing. You, there's so many different species of birds. And I don't think people are aware of that sometimes because of the elevation, they don't think about it, but you, you've got such beautiful. Um, if you want to see Tashi's photographs, uh, he has a personal Facebook page and then you also have Tashi Argali photography Facebook page. Um, and you have hundreds, if not thousands of beautiful photographs, Tashi, it's just amazing all your photographs. There's some camera trap and, and mostly manual. Um, they're just spectacular. Um, there was another question in the chat about poaching. Did we lose him? Uh oh, I think he dropped off. Rodney, are you still there? I think we, maybe we could I, talk I, a little. I am still, oh. yeah, yes. Um, yeah, as you can see, I think Tashi is amazing with his photographs and he's re well respected within Nepal. He put together a little movie actually that was shown in, this is three years ago now, 
when all 12 uh, Snow Leopard Range countries came together in Kathmandu at a big meeting, the opening uh, little video was done by Tashi with help from, um, I think WWF was involved, but anyway, it was all Tashi's photography and it made a huge impression because even these government officials who come to these meetings have never seen snow leopards. And here they've been asked to come up with strategies for the protection of it. So having linkages with people like Tashi, who's a very shy guy actually, um, connecting with government officials who set policy and provide funding hopefully for programs is I think an important linkage that SLC can help uh, facilitate. I would also have to say that please buy Tashi's photographs if you would like some of them, because I know they are put to very good use. Um, Tashi is quite a community mobilizer in the area. And he just recently worked with a community to build a Buddha shrine. And we think that is important because Buddhists have a very strong feeling that all forms of life have, have a right to exist and that sentient beings should be protected. So the more we can spread those kind of messages and strengthen the traditional values and system, the more likely we're going to protect snow leopards as, you know, as people go into their habitat more and more. Has he come back? Not yet. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Um, we, might, we might have lost him. Um, you know, the internet over there is pretty poor. And Tashi was actually talking, I could see and recognize that he was talking from his um, little hotel that he has. Yeah, we like didn't mention that, room. yeah. Yeah, and he has a bed and breakfast, doesn't he? Uh, he does. hotel. Yeah, his wife runs it, and it's a it's a very well run place. Nice meals, um, and uh, I think they've expanded the rooms recently. But it's right as you come into town. I think it's a, one of the very first guest houses that you run into. Um, so that's his source of their family source of income comes from tourism, and as you can imagine, because of COVID. Uh, 19, they really suffered a lot. And one of the options that we can have going forward, of course, is trying to give communities alternative forms of income generation. And we have a big program <clears throat> in Tashi's area to try and identify some of those alternative ones. The, the one option we are working on is a chive, it's a garlic actually, wild garlic that is harvested by the people and they have to go up into the rangeland into snow leopard habitat when they do that of course they disturb the wild prey and i noticed you didn't show any pictures of blue sheep so people may not know what the prey looks like but anyway that's another element and if we can get people cultivating this uh, garlic uh, closer to the village we can reduce the disturbance up high in the wildlife habitat so that's one experiment we're working on. Um, the other is that more and more Nepalis and Indians and local, uh, you know, from the people from the main city, especially the youth, the adventurous youth are beginning to track more so that that will help reduce the impact of, you know, international tourism that it's had. Yeah, and I noticed I said he, enough he said that they'd that. only had one track in the last year, that's not good with COVID. It's not good. Exactly. Well, I think we might have lost him. So, and we have reached our hour. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming and all the wonderful questions. Um, please visit Tashi's Facebook pages. Um, he has a personal one and then he has, it's Tashi Argali Photography and it's, he's very easy to find on Facebook. And then he's also on YouTube and he's all his photographs are featured in Searching for the Snow Leopard. And if you don't have a copy of the book, you can get it through our website. And, uh, but please do visit his Facebook page. And as Rodney was saying, um, you know, I'm sure he has lots of photographs for sale and uh, 
they're just beautiful, but he's a very active guy. You guys have got to go to his YouTube channel and check out the video that he did of cycling in through the mountain, down the mountain trail. I've watched that over and over again. He's put some great music to it and it's very exciting. But uh, I thought that was when he said he has crashed on his bike, that's not good, but he was laughing about it. So he must have been okay. But um, I want to thank everyone for coming. I, I want one final comment, Siobhan. Sure, we sure. Cut me off. Please, you know, we really do depend on donations uh, from the general public and uh, foundations that we apply to. And we can guarantee if you want any particular funding to go to conservation in the Annapurna area, just note that and we will make sure that that happens. And thank you exactly. all for attending. And if you guys ever miss any of our cat chats, they are on the website um, in the media section uh, on the website. It says conservation cat chats and, and all that we've done this summer are on there and uh, the donation pages on the website. And uh, please do visit Tashi's pages. And I wanna thank you all for coming. Uh, our next cat chat is in September. I believe September 15th and you guys have a great day and thank you Dr. Jackson for joining us and we're sorry we lost Tashi but um, this was a lot of fun and we'll see you all later have a great day and thanks email to Tashi for his participation much appreciated